before they printed on paper, they printed on metal. Uh, I believe it was copper and silver. And this type of photography was only done, I think, between 1830 and 1860. Relatively short time, and you also, it was very expensive to have done, to sit for these. We have more of them, and they're just miscellaneous, old pictures on metal. In 2013, my father was 88 years old and beginning to have some trouble, took a couple falls and so forth, and so we decided that we should move him to assisted living. We had to sell his house and put it on the market. He had lived in that house 58 years. A lot of stuff in the house, so we had a lot to clean out. One of the things that was kind of intriguing among all the family history was a cardboard box that was in the attic. The family story goes, uh, this would have been about 1955, and I was seven years old. We were living in an apartment building in Oakland, and an old lady who lived in the building knocked on the door one day, said she was moving out, and said she couldn't take this box with her. Uh, she didn't say why. So she asked my dad to keep it for her, and she would come back and get the box in a week or two. And he said, sure. And she never came back. My parents put the box in the attic. When we moved, it went with us. And my dad held on to it ever since. Sadly, my dad only lived another month after we sold his house. Um, he went very quickly. My sister came down from Washington for the memorial service and then to help clean out his little apartment, which was emotionally exhausting, of course. And I remember this, we're sitting in this living room, having a glass of wine, it's about nine o'clock at night, and she says, do you have the box? <laughs> and I said, I do. And she said, let's open the box and see what's in it. So the oldest thing here is information about a gentleman named Alphonse Rogier, and that's him. Alphonse was born in 1847, and this is his enlistment in the French Army. This big piece of paper here. So, and then we have what I believe is his leather pouch for carrying documents. It's not for money. I mean, it's possible it's for money, but I, mostly it's for papers. In 1871, he's 24 years old, and he, he immigrates to America. So this is his passport. This is what they used to look like and he ends up in San Francisco. Comes to New York, says New York right there, from Paris, but he ends up in San Francisco. These big documents, and when I fold this up, I believe it would fit in this wallet. And when we opened it up, we knew that this was like really interesting stuff. This was really a find, there were all these photographs, and it was a great emotional break from the stress of what we just had done and uh, it was like a little treasure trove. He eventually gets married. He marries a woman named Sylvie Landry. These are, I believe, her belongings, and I'm pretty sure that these are her little glasses. These little, tiny spectacles. We wondered who was the woman who left the box in these pictures. Was she in part of this? It was her family stuff. So then, because I was used to doing some work on Ancestry, and I had done a lot of uh, work on my own family, I got an Ancestry, and there's a way that you can message people. But before I could do that, I had to get all that stuff in chronological order. I had to figure out who was who, who begat who, uh, who died, who was still living. And then I just became, honestly, kind of obsessed with it. This is their marriage license. They were married in San Francisco. They moved to Oakland somewhere along the line. They have a daughter, and she's born in 1885. Her name is Marie. I'm pretty sure, darn positive, that that's the woman who kept all these things. All of this belongs to Marie. And this is Marie's autograph book from the time she was 13 to the time she was 15. 
I guess that was what they used to do back then and, and somewhat do today in yearbooks. But before they had yearbooks and things like that, they would write these lovely little poems to each other. May I read you one? Okay. <laughs> I just think this is so sweet. Dear Marie, I wish thee every blessing that can attend thee here. May each future birthday prove my wish to be sincere. Ever your loving friend, Minnie Briggs. And there's another one. Dear Marie, when school days on this earth are over and rest to you is given, may you pass through all the schools of life and graduate in heaven. Your loving friend, Charlotta P. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? When Marie is nine years old, her father dies. So Alphonse didn't live terribly long life. And he died in 1894 and he's buried at Mountain View Cemetery in Oakland. And this is a picture after her son Frankie is born. So this is Marie now. This is her husband, uh, George Pringle, and their son Frankie. These are some postcards and things, some of them from World War, during World War I. This is care of George Pringle, the Central Market in Oakland. And this is how he figured out what Pringle family this was because they owned a store in Oakland and that's how I could track them down a little bit that helped when I was contacting people through Ancestry I put a few of these pictures up because I didn't want to think people that I was just stalking people trying to find people just for whatever I wanted to let people know I really did have a bunch of stuff and this is some of the stuff I have one of the things I have which was a light bulb moment this is a very old photograph from Scotland. That's where the Pringles were from. And a woman contacted me through Ancestry named Carol Santos, and she had almost the exact same picture. Carol Santos put me in touch with Kevin Lund. As it turns out, his mother had married into the Pringle family, and he was into genealogy too, and so he had a lot of information on his step family. He wasn't completely sure where the descendants of George and Marie were. There was a point where I thought, we're not gonna find these people. Uh, we, we don't have any more clues. I almost gave up. I believe Kevin and I emailed back and forth, I think for about three years, trying to put the pieces together. And he finally called me last year and said, I found him. Marie was the woman who left the box. She had a son named Frankie who eventually had a daughter. And the daughter's name was Bambi. And Bambi called me. And Bambi's 80 years old. How does it feel to have to get it all the way in I have mixed feelings. In a way, I feel like, you know, the grown-up part of me says these are somebody's this is somebody's personal effects they need to go to the family they need to go to the people they belong to um, it needs to go home this needs to go home this needs to go all go back to the rightful owners but at the same time I spent so much time doing all this work that I I got to know these people a little bit through the documents, through the letters, through the personal things. And I feel like I know Marie, I've never met Marie. You know, so I feel a little bit like I want to hang on to her myself, but. But I know that's a little um, strange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fun. I know. Now I know. all we got to do so is so nice to see you and talk to you and see you yeah. in real life. Okay, so I got to get this out of here. Okay. And this um, is fun. <laughs> there it is. It's full. It's full. I mean, there's a lot of stuff yeah. in there. We'll okay, go in and we'll 
we'll thank you lay it out and yeah look we'll at go it in and lay it out and see what's what see what's what we did not know this existed we, okay we did not because grandma was in the apartment right she moved to another apartment okay then she had a stroke and oh. she ended up uh, one of her neighbors found her okay. and my dad couldn't get a hold of her because he usually called on Sunday sure so anyway these the lady the neighbor that found couldn't reach my grandma and went into the apartment and found her she ended up in the hospital and she didn't really ever come out of the coma that she was in mm -hmm. and we went up to visit her in the hospital and uh, she would squeeze my hand but she she, just gently right 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 and that was it and then she passed away got it okay. so we didn't know anything about this right now grandma kept all this stuff and she did give this to my mother who is terrible as far as keeping <laughs> track of things okay and this is a metal this is to Alphonse Rosier which was our relative in France and they came from the town of Rosier France okay so that's kind of cool too very cool anyway shall we I can't even imagine someone <laughs> holding on to stuff that long I th that that says a lot about your dad do, do you want to start in the, yes. the, the the farthest back we go okay here is Alphonse's I have the rest of his things <laughs> but um this is his, let's see if I can get this right. There he is. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that fun? And then this is his military recruitment from France. That's when he joined the. Look at the, that. Isn't that beautiful? So that's his enlistment paper. Interesting, huh? And then, ha, do you know, have you ever seen these? These are daguerreotypes. Yeah. When they used to print them on metal. So he has a whole bunch of those. And my grandmother used to tell me when they put these corsets on, you held on oh, and really someone stuck. got behind you and they would squeeze you until you passed out. And then when you passed out, they'd loosen it just a little bit. So the women in those days were really not weak. It's just that they couldn't breathe. And so they had to have smelling salts wherever they went. And that's because they... Uh, they cinched them up. Yeah. So Sylvie and Alphonse marry. They have Marie, right? This is before the turn of the century. Is that Marie? That's Marie. That's Marie. I, see, I know these people. I know. That's Marie. That's of course that's yeah. Marie. This is history. You know, this is the reason that I get angry when people try to wipe out history. Because if you wipe out your history, oh my gracious, look at this. You have to turn around. Oh my goodness, and she probably felt like she was the belle of the ball. Those are circus people, I think, don't you think? They look, aren't they wonderful? I know. I think so. I think so. Because he kept it all those years. I don't think he had the heart to give it away. Every time he moved, well, he moved, what, twice? He, did, he just didn't have the heart to. He wouldn't have tossed a whole family's history in the garbage. He would have never done that. But this I love. This is almost frame worthy. This is their marriage license. Whoa. Is that a seal? Data, California. Oh, that's beautiful look at look at the beautiful pictures no oh, i i think that this was meant to be i think so too i think so too i think so too. absolutely meant to be because who in the world would keep these things that don't belong to you you don't even know any of these people and you took such good care of it i have I... you're going to get a gold star on <laughs> your chart that's for sure <laughs> well we we can I hope we can keep in touch with each I other. Hope it would so. be kind of cool. It would be lovely. If you... I send Christmas cards. I, I will. still do that. So sweet. Do that. Uh, all right, that's what I'm going to do.
How do you feel, Mom? I feel great. I feel better than great. I just feel like um, I just met, like, I don't know, the sweetest people in the world. We couldn't give it back to anybody better, you know? Yeah. And when she took out that picture of Marie, and I had the same picture, that gave me goosebumps. Yeah. It really did. You know? They were just adorable. Just adorable.